Okay, we're out here at the print farm Saturday doing a little testing of some of the printers and some print jobs. This one here, I've been printing these little clips for the um, helping hand. This is a power cord clip for the table mount. And I printed them with brim because they were they had a tendency to have one of them lose adhesion and mess up the whole batch but what I'm doing now I'm printing 40 of them at one time here with no brim so we're going to try this out and see how it does and hopefully if it works out I won't have this mess because these are just too hard to get the brim off of them they're small parts and kind of a pain and over here I'm setting up the vice clamp part to print three of them at a time it's about a 24-hour print job and I want this printer to be the dedicated printer to print those this is an ET4 Pro and this is just a uh, ET4 so that's what I'm doing down here and then uh, I've gone ahead and have a couple other jobs. I'm printing these covers, the power box covers for the helping hand on this printer. This printer pr prints two parts. It prints nine at a time of these power box covers. And then it also prints the strap holders for the orange lap dining. So I kind of run these until I have what I need and then I'll switch over and run some power box covers on that. And uh, up here, I think we've talked about this one before. I'm going ahead and trying to fill up this bin. Once I get a full bin, I'll stop printing these but this is another, these are both dedicated printers for this one part here. I just continuously print those until I go through a full spool of black PLA. And right now it feels like I may be able to run one more after this. Over here we're printing, we printed some of these rod end, female rod end pieces for the helping hand. We're printing another batch on the PEI sheet here. On this CT4. Over here we've been printing these frames for the filament counter and we're printing on this printer and this one too. And we'll keep printing these till we get about 20 because I'm going to make 20 of the filament counters. And then down here we're running PET G on the PEI sheet to see how it does. And printing a base for the table mount helping hand in PET G. So that's some of what's going on uh, this Saturday at the print farm. Normally, I don't print part on Saturday and Sunday, but I will come down here and do first time. And a couple of these jobs are the first time they've been printed on this particular printer or with this particular surface. Okay, I'm checking these printers out. See if they're ready to run. This belt's really loose on this one. The track, the rollers seem to be pretty good here. Belt on this one's tight. I've got some wobble in that. See my lower belt's good. Okay, so I've got a couple things. 
We've got a belt there that needs to be tightened up a little bit. It's just a little bit loose. And over here I've got, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it just barely has a little bit of movement to it. Uh, first of all, I reached under there, and sure enough, I can spin the rollers. So I need to go under there, and I just feel till I get on the... Okay, I tighten that one a little bit. Now that roller's tight. Now, back one's still loose. Get the wrench on it. And now it feels tight. Still rolls good. Okay, that took all the play out of it. So that one's good. Back over here on this one. Yeah, you can see this belt here. A little bit loose. So what I'm going to do is get my Allen wrench. Okay, we're going to tell you this is a two-handed job, so put the camera here where you can watch. I'll have to take these four Allen screws loose right here. Now, it's not that this thing came loose and cause that belt to be loose but over time with these printers running that belt will stretch a little bit and have to be retightened so it's always a good idea that feels good there you notice I'm just using pressure with my thumb here to pull tension on that belt. You don't want to use the tool and try to pry this thing because you might put too much pressure on it. But if you just use your finger, your thumb, it usually works out about right. Now that's that feels really good now and definitely have the, the slop out of it. So that will help this thing print better in a vertical print if the outside surface isn't smooth on the two sides of the print then that could be an indication that you've got some slop in this belt or that your rollers aren't adjusted correctly on this guy so I'll finish tightening this thing down Okay, belt. Okay, these two printers are in pretty good shape now. So, these are some of the things I check for on the weekends when I'm going down and looking at these printers, see if there are any adjustments needed. The vertical rollers, too, you can feel those and see if there's movement in those or if they're tight. Sometimes they may need to be adjusted. But checking your belt tensions and so forth make the printer run a lot smoother because if you start having some bad prints you may be chasing something else when the problem all along is just that you've gotten a little bit out of alignment. Okay, as you can see, temperature right now is about 79 degrees in here, 39% uh, humidity, which pretty good considering the fact we don't have all these printers running. If we had a lot more printers, I think we've only got one, two, three, four. Uh, six, seven. We've only got about nine printers running, 
So they'll they'll help keep the temperature up in here in the winter time. But fire up about 10 more of these things and it'll be nice and toasty about an 84, 85 degrees in here. So I try to keep it close to 80 when I'm actually printing production parts because that seems to be the temperature I'm, I've got these printers tuned into. Okay, we're back down here and it looks like this job is finished. So we'll take these parts off and then we'll simply go down here reheat this thing set it to reprint <laughs> okay she's ready to take off again Looks like it's getting a good start. So, restarted and Ben's finally filling up. Okay, let's see how we did here with our power box covers. Looks like they printed and they're popping off pretty easily. So there they are. And we'll also restart this one. Looks like we're getting a pretty good quality print here. So let's just set these aside. Let this one restart. Okay, let's go ahead and get it restarted here. Get our temperature set here. Okay, we're underway now. Okay, here we are at our printer, printing our filament counter. And it looks like we've finished printing this one. So we'll take it off and we'll restart this printer. We'll be printing another one of our filament counters. Since we're printing just one, it'll be 17 hours, 21 minutes. And we're off and running on this one. Okay. Here's our print job that's running on the PEI spring steel sheet and it's a 37 hour 13 minute run and we're about 24 hours into it because it was about this time yesterday actually about probably about 23 hours into it but everything looks like it's coming along fine the parts seem to have good adhesion I don't 
notice any lifting or anything. So we'll let this one just keep on going until tomorrow. Also, I thought I'd show you I've received this little filament splicing tool that I ordered. And uh, it should make filament splicing a little bit easier for me. I don't often splice filament. Usually if I run out of filament in a printer, I'll go ahead and just feed new filament in through the filament brake sensor and restart the printer and manually feed it till it gets into the gears of the extruder and then it just takes off and pushes the uh, broken piece of filament on through the extruder and everything works fine that way but this is if you're wanting to uh, splice filament outside of the away from the printer and it could come in handy in some circumstances so we'll test it out and see how it works and then if we ever need it uh, we'll know how to use it so until the next time happy printing from new tech inventors <laughs>